The Wolf is obviously the most notorious fictional character in the Stronghold universe and he's very much the antagonist of the series, leading the rat, the pig and the snake in times of war. It's, you know, his past is shrouded in mystery and we don't quite know where he comes from but after receiving his dukedom, you know, he goes abroad, he comes back, he takes over England and he you know, sort of sets into motion the events of the original Stronghold and, and everything that followed. He's a very large man with a slightly sort of Germanic look and intense glare. He lacks any sympathy for others, making him a pretty terrible AI companion if you ally with him because he just generally won't listen to you. I would rather tear down your castle with a spoon than offer you assistance. He's cold and calculating, he only cares for himself and the sort of the power he has over his lands. The Wolf is one of the strongest AI opponents of Crusader 2. He builds large castles with thick layered walls, towers manned with plenty of archers and you know, many different types of traps. Of all the AI opponents of Crusader 2, the Wolf's castles are definitely the most deserving of the name Stronghold. In the Crusader games, the Wolf is a more defensive player, but he's no less dangerous. He will attack you in force later on in the match rather than harassing you early on. But leave him alone long enough and the Wolf will often be the lord with the largest number of troops, meaning that the longer you wait for attacking, the more difficulty you'll have in defeating him. The Wolf drives his productive economy with high taxes of fear, as he would, giving out rations and ale to sort of counter his negative popularity. The Wolf uses loads of heavily armoured troops, meaning that you will need powerful units to repel him, and, and similar numbers as well. And crossbowmen and stationary defences are really great for taking out armoured troops, but you'll also want to put your archers on high towers to give them the best possible range advantage. Sending out squads of horse archers is a great way to um, thin his numbers or distract his troops as they come to your castle. But if they finally get there, pitch ditches are a great way to take out swordsmen. But to be honest, if the wolf's forces are at your castle walls, it might be too late. So when it comes to attacking the wolf, it really is the earlier the better. The skilled player can prevent the wolf from building his fortress by rushing him early on with a reasonable number of assassins and horse archers. While your assassins can handle themselves in a fight, the horse archers can take out the low number of defending troops that the wolf has at the start of a match. Ideally then, you can move in and kill the wolf for your assassins, you know, killing him before he even knows what's going on. If you're unlucky enough to let the wolf build up his full castle, your only option will be to build huge amounts of siege equipment in hopes of punching a hole through his defences. You'll have to take out his towers, buildings and defences one by one and slowly move in on his keep while protecting your siege engines at the back. As soon as there's an opening, you'll need to rush your assassins in behind them to kill the wolf. You know, the use of slaves works an alternative strategy, setting fire to his economic buildings outside the walls, but this can be difficult with their low health and the wolf's fondness for archers and traps of all shapes and sizes.